Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. Today, we will reflect upon Luke 20, verses 27 to 38. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we come before your throne today, seeking wisdom, seeking the understanding of your word. Show us, Lord, how limitless you are. Show us your infinite love. So it gives us a fresh hope and courage to face this world. We ask this in the precious name of your Son, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Tombstones of partners who have died say together again. Now people have quite a few ideas about life after death, all of which may not necessarily be true or correct which is why we need to read verses like this, because Jesus in this verse gives us a peek into what will be. We need to read this and understand, because some of us think we have an idea and some of us think maybe we know. All this is kicked off by the Sadducees. Now the Sadducees are a people who do come from a priestly origin, but they only believe that the authority are the first five books of the Bible, which is which we know as the Pentateuch, and the Jews know, know it as the Torah. The first five books, namely Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Now the Sadducees are asking Jesus a question. They are actually trying to question his authority and they are trying to also trap him. Their question is based on the law of Moses from the book of Deuteronomy. This is about the Leverite marriage. So they are going to pose an absurd argument to Jesus. They go to Jesus and they question him and they say, Teacher, a man marries a woman and dies without giving her a child. After that, his brother marries her as per the legislation of marriage, and he also dies without giving her a child. This goes on till seven brothers marry her and all die without giving her a child. This poor woman also dies. Now, this is a highly contrived situation and very, very unlikely. But they question Jesus and they ask him, whose wife will she be in the resurrection? Now, we need to remember that the Sadducees do not believe in the resurrection, nor do they believe in angels. What they cannot explain, they do not believe. Now, Jesus answers this question with authority with understanding of the law. He interprets it very well, the law of Moses. And not only that, he also demonstrates faith and confidence in the life-giving power of the God that he proclaims in the temple. He answers them and says, people in this life marry and are given in marriage. If you are worthy to belong to the resurrection, now this could be taken as a warning. And he says, if you are worthy to belong to the resurrection, then you will neither marry nor will you be given in marriage because then you are like angels. You are children of the resurrection. You are children of God. In fact, you will never die. Once you are resurrected, you will never die. So why do we need marriage? Let's see what this does to marriage. In fact, the ceremonial marriage uh, vows say, till death do us part. So when a partner dies, the marriage is finished. It's over. There is no more marriage. So what Jesus is trying to say here is that in the resurrection, we are not married to anybody 
nor will anybody be given in marriage. And he says that resurrection transforms the way we look at life. Because the way we look at life today is limited. It's limited to this world. Because we have no idea what is going to be in the next world. This is what it says in 1 Corinthians 2 9. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the human heart conceived, what God has prepared for those who love him. It's unimaginable. So the Sadducees were trying to trap Jesus with their own limited imagination. Now Jesus gives scriptural proof from the Bible. He bolsters his argument from the pages of the Torah. In Exodus 3.6 he says, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Jacob, the God of Isaac. Now, Abraham, Jacob, Isaac were dead then. And God says, I am the God of Abraham. He does not say, I was the God of Abraham, the God of Jacob, the God of Isaac. This proves that Abraham, Jacob, Isaac are living. They are living in the resurrection. Hence, the Lord says that I am the God of Abraham, the God of Jacob, the God of Isaac. Thus saying, he silences his interrogators. They have no more questions for him. He, Jesus, has the wisdom. He has the authority to teach. So we must listen to what he has to say. Drawing conclusions from this, we must accept that our imagination is limited. Our imagination of what God can do is also limited. So when we pray to him, we have absolutely no idea how much he can do for us. Once again, because our imagination is limited to this world. Ephesians 3.20 says, Now to him who by the power of work within us is able to accomplish abundantly for more than all we can ask or imagine. Our God can do immeasurably more than what we ask him. So often we limit what we ask for because we are not sure what he can do or what he cannot. But rest assured, he can do far more than we can ever imagine. We should thus learn to trust. Trust that God has so much more in store for us. We should trust him. And we should know that he has a plan for us. He has so much in store for us. And this should give us a new hope. A hope to face the world, to face the challenges of the world, to face the hardships of the world. Because we should believe in his promises. And we know that he has always fulfilled it and he will fulfill it. Praise the Lord. 